For 2024, Acura refreshed the TLX. And while it does look better with the frameless Diamond Pentagon grill, we have the updated screen in there. Still not a touch screen, it still has a touch pad. It's still a fun car to drive, although it can't really keep up in performance, even in the Type S with some of the German competition. But man, is it a gorgeous car and it is fun to drive. Now, sales have been in the gutter this year. We're going to explain why that is. But the newest drip of information out there is saying that the TLX could be headed for the graveyard. <laughs> We're over at the drive. Acura TLX could end production late 2025. And given the timing of Honda's upcoming rollout of electric vehicles, it's possible the next TLX could be an EV. So we're going to dive into this today. And a little side note, tomorrow, at least at the time of this recording, tomorrow I'm heading to Michigan to give you guys a tour of this vehicle, actually a couple vehicles, the Acura Performance EV concept. I'll give you guys um, a cool tour of hands-on impressions. And also uh, this vehicle will be there, the HRC Integra Type S, all kitted out with, it's, it's yes, it's aftermarket, but it's all, um, you, you could say, in theory, if it works out, and I'll try to get to the bottom of this, you would be able to buy these parts from Acura dealerships. They'd be able to install them. That's the idea, that's the hope here. And I'll cover uh, more of this with my walk around just tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. But let's get into the TLX could end production quite soon. One of the Acura representatives, I probably know who it is, but of course they're not named by name here, but they responded to the drive with the following comment. We cannot comment on or speculate, that's my job, right? On future product portfolio. The TLX was recently refreshed for 24 and the updates have been well received in the market. While production will fluctuate due to the line consolidation at the Marysville Auto Plant, TLX continues to play an important role in the Acura lineup. Sales will be communicated for the month of August today, later today, and I'll get those numbers out to you when they drop. But in the meantime, we're gonna look at where Acura is with the TLX so far this year, up until the end of July, right? The end of July. So TLX down 57% on the year. On the month of July, it was down 62%. All right. It is splitting production on the same production line with the Accord until that goes to, I think it's Indiana. Until the Accord goes to Indiana, the, the Integra and the TLX and the Accord all share the same assembly line. Now, is the Integra being affected? Absolutely. It's down 20% on the year, but more noticeably, it's down more, uh, more recently, all right? 26% down on the month of July. And a large part of that is due to the drop in production volume on the Integra, on the Accord. Look, the Accord's down quite a bit as well, 20% or so on the year. And with these sales falling off a cliff this year, what does it look like if we look in the recent history of the TLX sales? Uh, we're over at Wikipedia. Um, sales peaked for the TLX at 47,000 in 2015 and, uh, decline, 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 incline in 2021. That's when the redesign came out, I believe. Um, and then decline massive, right? With that 2022 year, which was an absolute, it's a year that Honda will never want to see again because of the chip supply issues, the part supply issues that they were having. They had to rework their supply chain in 2022. And yes, it is uh, more stable now. It's not as reliant on China. And that's why we saw a big jump uh, in production from 22 to 2023. But look, in 2021, it was at 26,000. Last year, 16,000. This year, if we go back to the sales, I mean, we'll be lucky to see... 10,000, very, very lucky. It'll probably be closer to like eight or 9,000. They're only selling 600 a month right now, uh, which is just, it's not where the market actually is. I hear trying to get your hands on a TLX is very difficult right now due to the lack of production volume. Um, and the Type S is the most desirable one, of course, and that is also get hard to get your hands on from my understanding. The drive is quoting this information from Automotive News. Uh, one of my favorite sources, and they're pretty darn reliable. But this is the big information drop that you know we're making this video on today. Acura could end the TLX late 
2025. It's unclear if there are plans to replace it. And the sedan is a slow seller, like I mentioned. There's two vehicles here that could kind of smooth over the lack of a TLX in the lineup. We have the ADX, which is supposed to be coming out next year, mid to late next year. The ADX is going to be an entry level Acura. Think of it as a crossover version of the Integra, or you could say an Acura version of Honda HRV. I would assume it would be built in the United States or Canada because there are no Acuras built in Mexico. And in fact, I don't think there are any Acuras built in Canada, but maybe this could be built up there. I'm not quite sure where they would plan to produce this ADX. As this enters the lineup, you have that entry level crossover that is going to really help the brand, brand out, I think. So let's go to the concept that I'm gonna give you guys hands-on impressions tomorrow. And I don't know when I'll have the video up. I don't believe there's an embargo on it, but anyways, this vehicle is gonna be the first model. This performance EV concept is gonna be the first model coming out of the EV hub in Ohio, which is that new assembly line. That's why production of the TLX is down because the other assembly line is being reworked for EVs. And I believe it's going to be flex for hybrids too. All right. So that's just what I'm hearing from my sources, but for sure, EVs are going to roll off that new assembly line too um, in Marysville, Ohio. This model is scheduled to go into production in late 2025. So in theory, that lines up with the TLX seeing a potential cancellation uh, for the 2026 model year. It wouldn't see 2026 model year, 2025 would be the last model year in theory of the TLX. But before the performance EV concept from Acura was debuted, they gave us this teaser. And in this document, they say that this is a segment defined sport utility vehicle. Could this kind of bridge the gap from the Integra to their crossovers? And now that we have the looks of it, the design of this, kind of like a raised up sedan thing, coupe-like crossover sedan. I mean, it's segment defined. I don't know what to call this. And so I could see this replacing the TLX. You might be saying, Kirk, there goes the legacy for the TL, the TLX just out the window. Yeah, possibly. I mean, look, they kill. I think most people would have a stronger allegiance even to, let's say, the the legend nameplate. But again, legend. If they called this a legend, I wonder what people would say or do because it is an EV, and that might you know rub people the wrong way. But we don't know what this is going to be called when it hits production. I don't know if Honda knows what it's going to be called or Acura knows what it's going to be called quite yet, but. Since this is coming out in late 2025, the report saying that the TLX could meet its end by the end of 2025, it's possible that this could be replacing the TLX because sedans just aren't doing well. However, the Integra does okay, and the Integra is fun to drive, and the Integra is more spacey on the inside than the TLX, especially in the back seats, all right? You, you don't have that drive chain, drivetrain tunnel taking up rear leg room, things like that. So yeah, I could see this replacing the TLX. Don't, don't quote me in saying that the TLX will be replaced by this vehicle, but it is a strong possibility. With the lack of success with the TLX, the lack of success overall with sedans, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, look, Lexus, it's the rumor that they're going to kill off the LS, the flagship which started their brand. That's a strong possibility too, all right. I want to switch gears before I end this. I'm a couple Infinity uh, articles here. Infinity could be killing off the QX50, the QX55. Look, they have just killed the the uh, the sedans, the Q50 Skyline and the Q60 Skyline Coupe in the past. Well, that was like a year, year and a half ago. The Coupe, and now Q Q50 has just been discontinued. The, these being on the chopping block is a big disappointment to me. But honestly, Nissan was marketing at infinity as Nissan plus years back. And then I think they realized that it, that's not like a good luxury image. So I think that's still going on in the background. And they're saying that the, this, the replacements for the QX 50 and 55 are going to be a rebadged Nissan rogue. I almost guarantee it. Could they have hybrids here too? It's a possibility. Um, we know that the Rogue, when it comes out, where should I say the redesigned Rogue, it will have a hybrid, but that's supposed to be early 2027. 
And if Infinity is any indication of beating Nissan to the market, look, the QX80, which I have in my driveway this week for review, the QX80 beat the Patrol and the Armada out to the market. So I could see Infinity getting precedence here, or preference here, and getting it to the market first before the Rogue comes. Would that is that a good business idea? I don't know, but at least the luxury brand is getting... Um, a heavily weighted favoritism there, which makes sense to me. It's got to have more power than the Rogue, in my opinion. It's got to offer something else other than the Rogue will offer to, to make it stand out. All right. But Lexus gets away with not having too much more than Toyota nowadays for powertrains. All right. Infinity also coming out with an RX Finder, a QX65. This has been rumored for a while now, but I just wanted to talk about it. Again, they're saying it could be a, a version of um, the Rogue's hybrid that could come in 2027. And we just don't know anything about this next gen Rogue hybrid system, assuming it's going to be e-power, but it might not be because we know, I mean, we just don't have any hybrids from Nissan in America. Everywhere else has e-power, but the market that desires hybrids the most, which is just bonkers to me. Anyways, that's a big reason why Nissan and Infiniti are struggling so badly right now with the lack of hybrids in their lineup. But as an RX fighter, it would be front wheel drive based, like the Rogue is front wheel drive based. It's gonna be big like the RX, um, and then you're gonna have a smaller version with the same powertrains would be my guess. Um, VC Turbo, who knows if it'll live on that long into 2027. I would assume it would, but I don't know. I gotta end it there. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for my walk around of the Acura Precision Concept, as well as the Integra Type S HRC prototype. But stay tuned, I'll bring it to you guys. Thank you guys, I'll catch you in the next one, peace.